deal that we landed as uh, general partners, a 101 deal in Corpus Christi. 101 units. Okay. Yes. The price for this property was $6 million. It was actually a 67% loan to value. There's no breach debt on this. So we had to raise like about $2.8 million. So you paid $6 million for 101 units. That's 60000 a door. That's really good pricing. Seven months later, we got our return back about 2.3 on our investment. We thought, hey, this is actually pretty good. This is actually like an aha moment for me. To clarify for listeners. So in 27 months, you 2.3 X your return. And on another deal in 18 months, under two years, you 1.8 X your initial return. And, and for and mathematical dummies like myself, that means <laughs> you put hundred grand in and you got 230 grand back. Welcome back to Multifamily Rockstars. So as you guys know, this is the episodes where we dive deep into our guests' deals and really give you some practical and actionable items to get started and do your first deal, especially if you're brand new to multifamily. And I've got my co-host, Mark Nagy, with me here as usual. What's going on, Rod? Good to see you. I know it's uh, we haven't been seeing each other very much. You've been so busy with all these deals you're working on. Yeah, yeah. I've had to take over some assets, so I've been very, very busy. But uh, no, we've got a good interview for you guys today. We've got Franklin Gonzalez, and uh, Franklin uh, uh, has uh, is is in about eleven hundred and twenty five units. Some of those as an LP, um, and he did his first deal as a general partner. Uh, I don't know when, but we're going to dig into it. Welcome to the show, Franklin. Thank you very much, Rod and Mark. Uh, nice uh, talking to you guys, and I appreciate uh, you letting me uh, be a participant on this podcast. Thank you very much. Of, of course. Well, let's let's get right into that first deal. So, so where was it? How'd you find it? How'd you get involved? Why don't you give us this, this, some history? Okay, so the first deal um, that we landed as uh, general partners, um, we have a group called uh, We Equity Partners. The We stands for West Coast, East Coast uh, team members. So um, we ended up uh, joining forces with another key principal and um, in a 101 deal in Corpus Christi. 101 units. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this was actually, um, you know, uh, something new to us. So um, they told us uh, if you want to actually learn the process and, uh, you know, dive deep into it, you know, get involved. So um, we found out of this deal like about two weeks before they were going to execute on signing the paperwork. So they told us, you know, if you want to actually uh, perform some due diligence, uh, go ahead and fly down to uh, Corpus Christi. So, you know, Grace and myself, Grace, my wife, you know, she's part of this, uh, you know, we equity partners. We ended up uh, flying to Corpus Christi to perform the due diligence. This was in December. So um, we ended up, uh, you know, talking with the key principals and uh, some of the operators and we learned quite a bit of you know performing a due diligence so this was actually step by step and uh, we ended up uh, doing the work um, this was actually something that was uh, very valuable to us just to uh, get to know the process um, so this uh, deal was uh, structured as a you know 101 uh, unit value add so we were actually going to uh, perform some, uh, you know, lipstick uh, type of makeover on this and add a couple uh, units, you know, to uh, make the deal just a little bit better. Um, and, you know, that's essentially it of uh, this deal. Um, I don't know if you so, actually want to. So wanna there wasn't a lot more. of CapEx. There wasn't a lot of CapEx on this deal. It was just some lipstick. Yeah, the CapEx was uh, roughly about $700,000. Um, okay. You know, renovation of a, a few units, um, converting the units uh, from uh, three one to three two. There was a, a few units that we needed to convert, painting the outside of the property, um, adding a laundry mat facility, and um, you know, just uh, enhancing you know some of the other units. You know, for example, just providing um, you know air conditioning units. You know, on those particular uh, uh, units. So basically, it really wasn't, you know, a heavy lift on that, in my uh, oh, opinion. Okay. And so uh, the, you partnered with this other team that found the deal. And I, I see in the notes here that they had another complex a few miles away, which is great. So you've got some, some scale there and, uh, and they knew the area. And so, um, so, 
as you were doing the, tell me the sorts of things that you looked at when you were doing the due diligence. Talk about the due diligence process a little bit. I think that'd be valuable for the listeners. Well, on the due diligence, we actually walk with the, um, you know, appraisers and the uh, people that are actually looking at, you know, all the details. So we were looking at, you know, everything and anything within the units. So, you know, we were kind of like the, the silent people just uh, performing the walkthrough. Uh, those were the individuals that were looking for, you know, broken windows, air conditioners working, uh, you know, things like that. So, um, you know, the ACs, you know, we got, you know, a better understanding. The, uh, you know, the flooring, the piping, the electrical, you know, things like that. The, that's the type of uh, knowledge that we gained. Also, what we actually did was actually, um, you know, looked at the rent rolls. So we actually ended up going through the uh, specific uh, individuals' uh, profiles and taking a look at the rents, just making sure, you know, who is, you know, caught up, who's delinquent, uh, that sort of, sort of thing. So, so you played a role in that. You played a role in that due diligence as well. Yeah, yeah, we oh, did. Wow. We did quite so they did, they did they didn't bring in a property management company to do this. They did it all in house. You didn't do it all well, in house. Initially, they did everything all in house. This was all the due diligence. So this is what we actually performed with the team. Okay. Um, eventually, they got a property management company. So okay, okay, and. Um, Talk about the the numbers on the deal. About what did you pay for it? How much was the financing? How much did you raise? Talk about the acquisition numbers. Oh, the acquisition numbers. Okay, so yeah. um, the uh, the price for this uh, property was six million dollars. So mm -hmm. it was actually a sixty seven uh, percent loan to value. Uh, there's no bridge debt on this, uh, so we had to raise like about uh, two point eight million dollars on it. And uh, when we actually uh, started raising, we did uh, think that we had some people that were ready to actually invest. And these were individuals that uh, were planning to invest like about up to $2 million onto this deal. But, uh, you know, that uh, didn't turn, um, you know, uh, so well. So we had to, you know, just scramble around and actually start investing on this uh, you know, particular deal, just talking to people and making sure that, uh, individuals uh, would invest on this particular deal. So you paid six million for 101 units, that's 60,000 a door. That's really good pricing. Uh, so it sounds like an interesting deal. Uh, talk about the unit mix there. How many different sizes of units that you had there? Uh, talk about that a little bit. I'm just curious, trying to get a picture of this, this asset. And what year was it built? Uh, it was built in 1948. It was renovated oh. in 2021, 22. Um, not so much of a renovation, but we did we do need to actually renovate just a little bit more. Um, you know, okay. It's, uh, units. So um, the the unit structure is actually they have like about 85 one ones, uh, about uh, 15 um, two ones, and the rest are three ones. And that's okay. actually um, what uh, what we're doing on that uh, unit. Okay, okay. Earlier, you said you're converting the three ones into three twos. Is that part of the value add? Because you, you mentioned if the whole place was renovated in 21, 22, where did you guys really see the value add on this sort of property? You'd think it would be almost topped out if that was the case. Um, well, I mean, that area is, um, you know, classy market and um, we're actually seeing that, uh, you know, uh, units going into a 3-2 are very much more, um, more, a lot of people like the 3-2s versus the 3-1s. So that's why sure. we're actually converting the 3-1s. So. Got it. Now, Got I, it. I, I want to take a step back here as well. There's something we skipped over because I think most people listening probably haven't done their first multifamily deal. And so I always love diving into people's first multifamily deal. And you talked about team. You talked about We Equity, which is your guys' group, and that you partnered with another group to come together. First of all, how, how did you go about building your own team, We Equity? And then second of all, how did you even go about connecting with this other group to get involved in this deal? How did those relationships come about? So the We Equity is part of the Warrior Group. Um, and we actually got involved in, um, you know, just uh, throughout conversations, the meetings that uh, warriors have or the, uh, you know, or, you know, the groups that uh, are part of the warriors. So we ended up actually, you know, talking to a few warriors and uh, we ended up uh, just joining. 
we collaborated on a lot of things, um, started looking at a lot of uh, properties and started uh, underwriting the properties to see if we could, you know, actually make a deal on those pro um, particular properties. With that, we actually, you know, if some of those properties we couldn't, um, you know, I guess get on our own, we would actually talk to other warriors to see if they could actually, uh, you know, help us uh, gain those particular properties. Um, with that, um, you know, we were just, you know, continuously looking. But with this other group, this, um, you know, one of our partners within the We Equity Partners, uh, they, uh, she found um, this other group, they somehow collaborated and they told us about this one particular deal. So we went into that deal just uh, knowing, you know, about this one particular deal. And uh, we ended up, uh, you know, signing with them and just saying, okay, this deal is actually going to be working uh, with us. What, what's your background, Franklin? What, 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 uh, what, uh, what's your job history background? Uh, well, I'm a technology manager. That's my background. Oh, so it. I do a lot of got technology. I, um, you know, mainly a numbers guy. So I like, I like to do that, you know, um, but okay. now I'm actually transitioning into the business side. So I'm, I do know a lot more about the business side because on this, um, you know, my W-2 is actually strictly working on the business aspect. So handle a lot of millions of dollars, you know, through the budgeting. So, um, you know, do a lot of project management, a lot of operation management in um, my W-2. And that actually falls into the uh, how to actually, um, you know, uh, work on these uh, properties. We're going to take a break from this great episode for a word from our sponsor, which is the Multifamily Bootcamp. Now, financial success is what you're after. We are rapidly approaching one of the greatest opportunities I think we're going to see in our lifetimes to capitalize financially. So if you know real estate is the vehicle for you, you're crazy not to spend a couple days with me at one of my boot camps. I've always got one right around the corner. Thousands and thousands of people have taken action on their journeys to creating generational cash flow for themselves and their families from attending my events. I don't sell anything at this event. So it's basically 16 to 18 hours of training with nothing being sold. Kind of a no brainer if you're serious about this to check it out text the word links to 72345 or go to rodslinks.com. Again, text links to 72345 or go to rodslinks.com. I promise you'll be glad you came. Let's get back to it. Okay, I see. So so that skill set translates over. Certainly the analytical underwriting piece does. Now, did you raise some money for this deal? Yes, we raised some money on this deal. We didn't actually uh, think that we're going to be raising money, but uh, we ended up, uh, you know, as a group raising uh, money. So we had a commitment to actually raise at least 500K, uh, you know, as part, you know, to actually uh, inject into the deal. So we ended up uh, fulfilling that obligation. But it's just, uh, you know, just working and just talking to the individuals. You know, I myself, we weren't really prepared to actually uh, raise uh, money, but we ended up... Uh, you know, performing this task. So what did this other group really need from you guys then? Why did they decide to bring your group into this? What was the value? Uh, they, well, there was no value uh, per se. They actually wanted to actually just show us how a deal is processed and how it's actually working. So they brought us in to hmm. actually collaborate. And that's what they wanted to actually do is just work with us and just make sure that, you know, how this actually deal is actually going to be performing. So that's, how they, um, I guess that's how they work. And that's what, uh, what they did with us. So um, obviously you're very analytical. And so you've been involved in the underwriting. If you've been playing around with that, obviously. Um, but I noticed, you know, we, we sent you a couple of questions before we started and, and we asked you what your superpower was because, you know, this business is a team sport and there's lots of different hats. And you said building relationships. So uh, as you move forward, you know, where do you see yourself falling into this? Are you going to be more involved in the asset management? Are you going to be more involved as, as you find more deals, raising money, um, doing, you know, more operational stuff there or doing more investor relations stuff or more underwriting and analysis? Uh, wh where do you feel like you're going to fall in? Well, I think I'm going to be falling in into the investor relationship, just making sure that, you know, we um, are, you know, getting the uh, investors into this particular, um, you know, any project that we are involved, you know, the investors can actually uh, join in our syndication. So mm -hmm. the relationship piece is basically, you know, talking to um, any and all individuals and just working 
discussing with them and just making sure that uh, you know that you know hey you know we, we got a deal um, if you want to actually participate on this deal you know um, let me show you the numbers let me show you how it is um, that's basically what I'm going to be uh, working on you know there every, every time we actually start looking at deals or working with other teams you know there's always an underwriter so you know, for me, I'm always, you know, kind of like the second eyes to actually take a look at the underwriting just to make sure that things are are good, too, as well. Asset management is pretty easy. My background is actually, you know, in the uh, single family. So, you know, I, I know this. I understand this. I know how that actually works in, in regards to the asset management. Uh, paying particular attention to uh, detail on, you know, when I did actually, and I'm still doing the single family, you know, flipping the houses, you know, it's just a repetitive process to me, basically. Yeah. So yeah. once yeah. once we have this, it's for me, it'll be kind of like a cookie cutter in the multifamily space, just making sure that, uh, you know, that we get to our end goal objective. Now, I know you also uh, had mentioned that you had invested in over 900 units as a limited partner as well. What what was the push that kind of made you decide that you wanted to jump into being more active and even being a general partner in multifamily to begin with, instead of just continuing on with the, the passive investing? So back in 2019, um, you know, Grace and myself, we met a couple of people that were actually, um, you know, um, seeking out investors, you know, to invest into a uh, multifamily deal. We didn't know what was uh, that about. We didn't um, understand that very, uh, very much. Um, but, you know, um, lo and behold, after talking to them, and they were basically our friends, you know, back then, and just, you know, we ended up investing in with them. Because it's like we kind of trusted, you know, them and we wanted to make sure that, uh, okay, so, you know, there are friends, it's like, let's go ahead and invest with them. So, um, you know, and we also, I thought that this was uh, going to be uh, diversifying because I was actually mainly investing in the stock market. I didn't think that the stock market was going to be uh, doing so well, so ended up uh, going into a different direction. Lo and behold, um, you know, 27 months later, we got our return back. Um, it was actually like about 2.3, uh, you know, return on wow. our investment. So, you know, we thought, hey, this is actually pretty good. We didn't think that it was actually uh, going to, you know, take this, uh, um, you know, short of a trip. So um, we reinvested with those individuals and it turned out to be, um, you know, one, uh, about 18 months later, we got a return back, uh, 1.8. And I was like, okay, so now this is actually like an aha moment for me. I just wanted to understand um, multifamily just a little bit more. I mean, there has to be something more than just uh, investing into a passive deal. Yeah. So, Wait, so to clarify for listeners, so in 27 months, you 2.3x your return. And on another deal in 18 months, under two years, you 1.8x your initial and, return. And for, and, for, and, for, and for mathematical dummies like myself, that means you put 100 grand in, you put 100 grand Double. in, you got 200, 230 grand back. Okay, so that's pretty darn good returns. And on the second one, you got you would have gotten 180 on 100,000 in. So that's fantastic. A little better so, than the stock market, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah, safer too. But yeah, okay. It, it is. And then, of course, you know, you get the, the benefits of the, you know, of the tax benefits. So that's what we like right. about it. So that's what we wanted to actually get a better understanding on this uh, real estate investment, especially in the multifamily site when did you come across you know suffer suffer through some of my stuff and come across me and look into the warrior program when, when did that happen <laughs> after that that's when we're thinking it's like there has to be something more to this so grace actually started researching she started looking at you know all these individuals started talking about you know uh you know who's the uh, i guess the better um you know a real estate investor you know having programs so she ended up uh, uh finding your program right and she told me, I was like, you need to listen to him. You need to understand, you know, what he does. And after that, we joined your program. Um, we did wow. actually a virtual boot camp with you. And, mm -hmm. you know, just right after that, we ended up, um, you know, joining your program, you know, got a coach, started talking uh, with everybody, started going to your um, your meetups. Um, and Warrior we events. You mean the warrior you know, events? Warrior. Yeah, your warrior meetups. We went to the Denver one. We went to the Phoenix one. We're planning yeah. to go in onto the next one that's actually up and coming. And uh, you in know, Orlando, so, yeah. 
That's in Orlando in November. Yeah. So, so so just so you guys know, the 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 boot camp in Denver was an actual boot camp with I don't know nine eight or nine hundred people, and then the one in was that the one my mom was at or after? Yes, the, the one in Denver. Um, the one was in my Phoenix, mom at I don't the, think your mom was there. No, no, Phoenix was a warrior event. It was just warriors. But the boot camp, you know, is 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 a three day training program for anybody, and and warriors get free access to that. Um, and but the warrior only event, we just had one in Sarasota this last weekend, uh, and there were a few hundred warriors here for you know deep dives and analysis and networking and everything else. But the one in Orlando coming up in November, that's a that's an actual boot camp. Again, three day training of every aspect of this business. And there should be about a thousand people there. There'll be a few hundred warriors there as well. So uh, just to give some clarity, by the way, guys, if you are interested in applying to the warrior program, text the word crush to seven, two, three, four, five. Uh, and let us help you crush it in this business. Again, text the word crush to seven, two, three, four, five. How has your experience been in the program, Franklin? Experience has been great. I mean, you get to meet yeah. a lot of people. People are talking to you. You get to understand their knowledge. And then, of course, you know, we pass off our knowledge. So, um, you know, for me, it's it's a big, big learning curve. And um, just to understand the multifamily. But um, the great thing is people like to share information. And that's yeah. what I like about this program. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's good. It, it's a good program. You are an educator, Rod. I appreciate, you Thank know, you. you like the... Um, wanting to educate while you're actually, um, you know, presenting. So this is actually something that's good. It's positive. Um, you're not only, you know, you, you know, like other people, they they want to sell you something. Your, your primary focus is to educate and that's it. So I appreciate that. That's one of the nicest things I've heard in a long time, brother. And that's, and that's, <laughs> and thank you for that. Very serious. Yeah. I actually remember meeting with you guys back then after that virtual boot camp. I remember Grace, your wife, was uh, definitely more the talkative one. You were more quiet, I think, at the time, if I remember incorrectly. But I wanted to talk about that because it's not very often we come across couples that actually work together in this. And obviously, you guys are managing a marriage. You're managing W-2 jobs. How, how do you guys manage all of that and also do the multifamily business together as a couple? Well, the best thing is Grace, she's a real estate professional in the state of California. So, you know, she knows real estate and um, she got me involved into the real estate uh, side of things. And so, you know, we, you know, we, we talk the same language. So this is good. This is the, uh, yeah. the best thing that can happen when you have a person, a partner uh, that understands what you're actually doing. And, you know, you have the same goals. Um, basically, you know, we talk about this on a regular basis, daily basis. We, you know, it doesn't matter. Morning, noon. At night, you know, we're talking about real estate, and this is actually something that, uh, you know, somebody else's partner needs to actually get involved too as well. Yeah. So um, yes, um, you know, um, when we actually talk about real estate, um, you know, we do have some differences, you know, about numbers, things like that, you know. But you know, no one's going to be a hundred percent, you know, in line. We're always going to have the differences, you know. We're, but you, 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 you know, you. I'm sorry to interrupt. I apologize. Oh, okay. But you know, you know, you know, you can be right or you can be happy. I'm sure you know that you've been married a good bit, right? <laughs> well, yeah, I, mean, was... I, I see it as, you know, she's the creator. She's the one that has this um, uh, mindset that it's like, hey, you know, it's uh, the sky's the limit. I mean, you know, sometimes I got to bring her down. It's like, OK, this is what uh, what we could do right now. And then that's like, let's move on to the next step. You know what I mean, so I got to build on her creativity. That's what I got to do. I love it. Love it. So I'm sure, you know, Franklin, there's a lot of people that watch this show that are right where you were when you were evaluating what you wanted to do and, you know, haven't made it made the decision, especially people in your space, in the tech space that are super analytical, that have to check off every single box before they make a move. You know, and I love you. If you're listening, you know who you are. Um, speak to the people that are either on the fence or haven't made a move yet. What would you what what would you say to them? You know, when, when, I, when I was actually started, when I was thinking about this on the fence, I just, you know, um, you know, stayed in my comfort zone. You know, my comfort zone mm -hmm. was actually in the stock market. You know, yeah, you, you make money in the stock market if you know what you're doing. But, um, you know, there's something different. You got to challenge yourself. You got to get out of your box and you got to make sure that, uh, you know, you love what you're doing. So um, if um, you are on the fence, you know, just start reading up on real estate because this is a, you know, something that can turn your life around. This is actually, uh, 
you know, something that can create uh, wealth for you. Um, this is more than, a, you know, playing the stock market or having your 401k, um, just making sure that you do something, you know, that can benefit your life. You know, being a part of uh, Rod's program, you know, kind of changed our lives too as well. I mean, you know, we are, you know, in a better position. You know, we have been in a, in a good position, but now we're in a better position. You know what I mean, uh, we do like, you know, investing in real estate and we'll continue to invest in the real estate realm, you know, forever. Uh, this is actually something that um, is amazing. And, you know, for me, I really don't know, um, you know, just for me, you know, I think I know like a 1% one, 1 of the real estate, you know, realm. But, uh, you know, I do actually want to get involved in, you know, a lot, lot more in real estate. Now that you've done your, your first deal and gotten that close, I know you mentioned you've worn multiple hats, you've, you've learned a lot of things. What, what are some of those things that are going to help make it easier on the second, the third, the, the next few deals? How is that going to change now that you've done your first deal? Well, I think it, it's going to get easier for me because, you know, during my first, uh, you know, deal as a general partner, you know, I wrote everything down. So anything and everything pertaining to what you're doing, what you're working on, who's working on what, I wrote everything down. So now I do have, you know, in, in myself, I have a template of what needs to happen, um, who needs to do what, and, you know, um, just making sure that, you know, this process is followed. Um, this is for me, you know, eventually it's going to be a cookie cutter um, where we just replicate this, you know, uh, time in and time out. Let me ask you this. Do you think anybody, regardless of background and experience, can do this business? And if so, how? Um, well, one of the th key things is you got to have the discipline. I mean, because yeah. if you're really um, thinking of actually, uh, you know, um, investing in into the real estate, you need to make sure that you know your numbers. You got to understand, you know, the financials aspect and you got to, you know, make sure that you mitigate any uh, p potential problems. So um, that's the way I feel. Um, but anybody can actually do this. Anybody and everybody can do this. Um, you know, yeah. as long as you have the, uh, the desire, you could do it. A lot of guidance, you know, can help out too as well. Rod's group is perfect for that because, um, you know, there's some questions I asked, you know, some of your, uh, your warriors and, um, you know, they're happy to help out with uh, particular, um, you know, questions that I got. So, yeah, that's the benefit of the group for sure, is the, the, the connections for sure. Well, and I hear this so often because I know I, I've talked with you guys before you came on board. I talked with, I don't know, it's probably been thousands of people and everybody has doubts, right? They could hear stories on the podcast and somebody saying anybody can do this, but people still will sell themselves on whatever story feels comfortable, right? Because if they don't want to do something, they'll convince themselves, hey, here's a reason why I can't instead of, hey, here's a reason why I can. And those are obviously the differences. And 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 I say all that to ask Franklin, were there were there any doubts along your your guys' journey to where you you had those those thoughts of, hey, here's the reasons why we can't and here's the reasons why we might fail. Did those things come up and how'd you overcome them? Well, yes, um, but those, I mean, you know, the big specific uh, thing that I had, the idea that I had is you got to jump in. Um, <laughs> but when you're jumping in, you got to understand, you know, what you're jumping into. So you really do need to, um, you know, just really understand, you know, all the pros and cons of that. But, you know, I didn't actually write it, you know, something down and saying it's like, well, this is a reason why I'm not going to be, you know, um, doing this. Um, one of the things is you have to be uncomfortable to actually uh, be successful. And, and this is true by, um, you know, when I've been listening to uh, podcasters, you know, everybody was saying you have to be uncomfortable. So one of the things that you got to do is, you know, just talk to people. What we're actually doing now is, you know, talking to individuals that are kind of on the fence, you know, our friends, you know, acquaintances, you know, and just, you know, starting to uh, get them to um, understand what real estate has done for us. That's basically what we're actually doing. So we're actually uh, talking to them about our lessons learned, what we actually uh, did, what, you know, what, you know, took us a long time to do, you know, so that way their path can be much easier. So, I mean, you know, my thing is about sharing and I'm going to be sharing, you know, um, 
things about, you know, hey, you know, uh, Warrior Group is actually an awesome group to actually be part of. Or, you know, um, you know, you got to read up on this one specific uh, topic if you actually want to do capital raising or you want to do asset management. So those are the things that we're actually doing. And, you know, that's what I like about this. You know, you could talk about real estate and, you know, there's it, it's an endless conversation. So do you mind if uh, listeners reach out to you, Franklin? I don't mind at all. They could reach out okay. to me. Yes. Fantastic. So uh, what's the either website or email or something like that? Well, um, you could actually email me at franklin at milligocapital.com. Our website is milligocapital.com. Okay. And that's spelled M-I-L-L-G-A-G-O capital.com. Yes. And Got our it. partner okay. um, website is weequitypartners.com. We equity partners. Well, the other thing, last thing I want to mention is, you know, we do at, at my large boot camps, we'll do a Hall of Fame award for our exemplary warriors. And this doesn't necessarily mean the ones that have the most units or made the most money. It's really the ones what I look for is the ones that help other people. And we've done it now, I don't know, three times, I think. And the first time we did it, I, I noticed, because we did a slide for each warrior, and we brought them up on stage. We called the Hall of Fame Awards. They get this cool little prize. And, and I noticed every single one of them does something to make the world a better place. There's veterans homelessness, veterans suicide, sexual trafficking, building schools. And I just noticed that you do as well. You have this hopeforallpause.org, and that's, and that's your nonprofit, you and your wife's nonprofit, yes? That is correct. Um, that is our nonprofit. We started this about a year ago, um, you know, supporting um, animals. And it's really domesticated animals that we actually support. You know, we, we feel that, you know, the, you know, dogs, cats, you know, animals really don't have a voice. So we would actually mm -hmm. want to help them out. I mean, because um, we just see too many, uh, you know, you know, bad things happening to animals out on the street. Yeah, yeah, that's a beautiful thing. Well, I just want to salute you for that, my friend. Uh, that's, uh, that's, you know, we, we talk about that a lot in the warrior program, a lot of warriors, uh, the most successful ones are the ones that that focus on making the world a better place. Listen, it's, it's great to see you again. And please uh, give your wife a hug uh, for us. And, and uh, hopefully, well, we not hopefully we'll see you in Orlando at the at the boot camp in November. Most definitely. We'll see, see you guys. Thank All you right. very much, Mark All and Rod. All right. All right. Thanks, Franklin. Great. Thank you. Great seeing you.